All right, so let's talk about good acting versus bad acting. And there is definitely a differentiation between the two. And there are certain rules and principles and values that you can follow to avoid falling into the category of bad acting and veering towards this territory, which is, which is good acting. So stick with me in the video and I'll share some of these right now. So first things first, it amazes me how many actors out there take for granted just how well tuned an audience's radar is for unrealistic human behavior. In life, we are always reading into other people, what they're saying, their body language, trying to read past what they're giving us and what they're really thinking at their core. We have to do this in real life for survival as human beings to succeed as human beings. So because people are doing this in their day-to-day -day lives, moment to moment, second to second, when it comes to watching acting, it is no different that the audience that are watching you have a very well-tuned radar for reading into human behavior. So don't disrespect that by when you go to act, think you have to give everything to them on a plate. If you are given a character that is sad, for instance, don't just give them a wash of sadness, a character that is 100% undeniably, congruently sad. Why not go past and start to show all the layers and wash and colors of what sadness looks like? Because it comes in many, many forms. And a lot of the time, somebody that's sad maybe doesn't feel comfortable with sharing that on the surface. A lot of the time it is underneath and it only comes out in, in little parts here and there. Like if you have sadness sitting in the pit of your stomach or swimming around the depths of your soul, if that's going on inside of you, the audience is going to start to sense that. And maybe you don't have it going on in your exterior on the outside, but we automatically think oh, something else is going on there. Not all is what it seems underneath the surface. So have respect for your audience. They really don't want to be served your character's intentions on a plate. What they much prefer is seeing an actor living truthfully from moment to moment and being able to read into the situation themselves. Okay, so another huge thing in the world of bad acting is trying to control the situation. This was what I mean by that, that the actor has pre-thought what they want to do before they walk into the scene. They've decided exactly where they're going to walk, how they're going to deliver the lines, who they're going to deliver the lines to. And all that leads to is you not being alive and open to the possibilities of what can go on in the moment in that scene. So if your fellow actor offers something up to you, if you've already decided how you're going to react to that, all you're going to do is completely block the connection between you and the other actor. All of this comes from a place of ego. This comes from a place of wanting to control the scene and control the situation that you're in. And control isn't a good trait as an actor. You want to relinquish the control factor and become much more open and vulnerable. Vulnerability is where true magic happens as an actor. So before you walk into the scene, what you need to do is, yes, have done your preparation work, Yes, know your character inside out. Yes, know your lines. But when you walk into the scene, throw all of that behind you. Maybe just realign with what your objective is in the scene, what you want to get from the scene, and not know what's going to happen next. That means you're going to be truly unpredictable as an actor. It means you're going to be in the moment. And these are the performances that people are, are drawn to when they don't know what the actor is going to do next because, well, the actor doesn't know themselves. And that leaves you open to the possibilities of what can go on in the scene with the other actor that you're involved with as well. And you can come out of the scene knowing that you've been open to all the possibilities that can bring to you and that you've just been in play mode with the other actor and the, the set that's around you. Okay, so another thing to stay away from is gesturing and, and overreacting as an actor. Like going back to the whole human behavior thing, we can tell so much about a person from the blink of an eye, from, from a movement of the head, from a breathing rhythm or pattern that, that's going on. Whether they're breathing sharp and shallow or 
or whether their breathing is deep and they, they come across as relaxed, we can read into the smallest change in behaviour. But for some reason, a lot of actors feel the need to gesture the fact that they're going through a certain emotion and that they need to be quite big and, and, and bold. And if they're in distress, you know, that they're, they're showing distress. If they're tired, oh, that they're showing that they're tired. Like, all of that stuff isn't helpful. Like, if you were feeling tired, then you're going to be feeling tired for hours and hours and hours and hours. It's not just on the line that you mention, oh, I'm, I'm tired. I, I, you need to embody the feeling of being tired throughout that, that entire scene, okay? Same as feeling distressed. Like, that doesn't just come out of nowhere. That comes as a small build to start off with, something that you're feeling a bit anxious about, a bit annoyed about, then turns into something that's just completely unmanageable in your head that you're overtaken by. And it's about doing the due diligence to work through the moment that you start to feel that annoyance, like pinpoint it. What, what's the, the one thing that, that starts to annoy you? When do you start feeling it? And then by the time we maybe see that level of distress, it, it, it comes further down the line to a point where it's, it's, it's unmanageable. Like we can't think of anything else anymore that comes out in a, in, a, in a burst. Like that is when emotions come to the surface, not just when it sort of says in the script, character A is distressed or whatever. You need to go through this fully formed three-dimensional journey to share these moments. Okay, my last one on the, on the bad acting front. It's people who try and blag it. People who don't do the work beforehand in deciding who, what, where, why, when. Some of the fundamental questions like, where are you? What time of day it is? Why do you want to be there in the scene? What do you want from the scene? All of those things. If you just show up and try and play a general energy of, of a scene, then that's only going to get you so far as an actor. What you want to do is do your preparation. Know how your character feels about certain relationships in the play. You need to know your character better than they'd know themselves in life because you don't only need to know the, the conscious surface level stuff that that character shares with everyone else. You also need to know their subconscious and their deepest, darkest thoughts and feelings as well. So do that work and it takes time. It does take a couple hours, but if you do that work, then automatically you are just filled with the life of that character before you walk into the scene. So yeah, you can just read the script a couple of times and show up and have a general idea. I think the character's a bit like this and uh, do the thing. And yeah, it might even work out for you. You might even get the job once, but trust me, that's not gonna be something you're gonna able to replicate time after time after time. Like acting is hard work. It is, is a real journey and it takes years and years to practice the craft. In fact, we should probably, in fact, we should never give up learning the craft of acting because there's always something you can work on, always something you can improve on. So don't just show up disrespectfully thinking that you can uh, go in with no effort because there's probably hundreds of people behind you that want that opportunity, that want to be in that audition room. So do the work, give yourself the best chance. So just to finish off this video, what are the traits of good acting? Good acting is people who work hard, who are respectful, who are open and playful when they're in the room with other actors. And they are mindful to the fact that as human beings, we are very nuanced in our behaviors and that that needs to be replicated in acting as well. Okay, so that was a little bit on good acting versus bad acting. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate you clicking that like button and hey, while you're at it, why not click subscribe? Uh, I'm uploading weekly videos on acting tips, lessons, and having a mindset for success. So I hope to see you around in another video. Take care, guys. Thanks.